Now, alhamdulillah, I accepted Islam. And after I accepted Islam, someone gave me a VHS tape called The Pathways to Islam. Some of you may be saying, what is a VHS tape? Maybe some of you younger folks. The VHS tape is a video. And this video was a panel session of three reverts or converts to Islam. And they were talking about their story, about how they accepted Islam. And they spoke about a lot of different things. But one thing, one thing that stood out to me and that stuck with me until this day was what one of the brothers said. He said, we not only read the Quran, but the Quran reads us. And at that time, I was young. I was new in the religion, new in the faith. I didn't really get what he was saying. What does he mean, the Quran reads us? Now, my memory, I'll admit, is not very good. From what I can recall, it being so long ago, I don't recall that he actually explained what he was saying. He didn't really uh, go into details about it. So what I did was I passed it off and I said, you know what, it's just a cliche. Sounds like a neat thing to say, that the Quran reads us. But over time, as I read more, as I studied more, with more experience, I came to understand what he meant, that the Quran reads us. And there's another video that I watched, this time on YouTube, so a little bit more recent, that in my opinion epitomizes what he was talking about. And this video was a lecture of another convert, or another revert. Some people like to say revert, some people say convert. Either one, fine with me. He was talking about how he had a very difficult time in his life. One year was particularly difficult when his parents divorced. And around the same time, one of his friends died. He was an Australian uh, guy. Maybe you've seen the video, very popular video on YouTube. And he spoke about how these events in his life led him to ask the major questions, like, why are we here? What is the purpose of life? And he was raised by parents who were atheists. But he himself had that inclination to do some research and find out, is there a God? What is there? What's out there? What does this all mean? What is the purpose? Why am I going through struggles? And so he went on a quest. He did his searching. He searched Christianity. He researched Hinduism, Buddhism, Mormonism. He researched all the different faiths. And then he came to Islam. And so one day, to make a long story short, he found himself walking into a masjid. And he met a group of Muslims. And then he presented all his questions. What is this about? What is that about? What do you guys believe about this? What do you guys believe about that? And every single time, as he says in this lecture, he says every single time, the brothers there, they pulled out a Quran, and they said, oh, here, go to this page, read this verse. And that struck him. He realized that the Quran was a message of guidance, was a book of guidance, that every time he asked his questions, he found the answers in the Quran. So over a few months, he kept on going back to the masjid, being with the brothers, praying with them, hadn't become Muslim yet, but was thinking about it, it was in the back of his mind. And one day he said, you know, I want to bring the Quran home. Can I, can I borrow it? I want to go home and I want to read it. And he said, sure, of course, absolutely. So he did that. Took the Quran, went home, did his reading. A few weeks later, he said to himself, that's it, I'm done. I want to become Muslim. It's very clear in this book, this is the way of life for me. So he waited until the sun went down, nighttime. Warm summer night, he wanted to set the mood. So he opened the window, he lit a candle, he dimmed the lights. He was reading the Quran. And then he closed the Quran, put it on the shelf. He said, Allah or God, this is it. I want to take my journey into Islam. I want to take that leap. I believe in it. I've read the Quran and it makes sense to me, but I need that, that extra push. I need that, that 
extra little push to, sh to just prove to me that this is true. So what did he do? <coughs> he said to God, he said, please, just show me a sign that Islam is indeed the truth. And he waited. And he said, I just want nothing big. Nothing big at all. Just maybe a bolt of lightning or something. And he waited. Nothing happened. He tells us in this lecture, absolutely nothing. Not even a sound coming, up, coming from outside. Not even the backfire of a car. So he said, okay, I'll give you another chance. God, this is another chance for you to prove to me that Islam is the truth. And so he waited again. And nothing, not even the creak in the wall of his house, not a sound. All he was looking for was a tiny sign. Absolutely nothing. And he was disappointed. He said, okay, I tried, didn't work. So he grabbed the Quran off the shelf. He sat back down. He opened it up back to where he was reading. And what verse did he read? Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth are signs for a people with reason. SubhanAllah. He asked for a sign and Allah gave it to him. Not in the way that he expected. Not in the way that he wanted. But in the Quran, in the very next verse. But the point that I'm making is that the Quran is that miraculous book that does this. That speaks to us. That, like the brother said in the panel session, Pathways to Islam, that reads us. Because it's Allah's words. And this is what we have to realize. And this happens time and time again. Now, if you want to watch this video, you can go to this website. It's called 30 Facts About Islam. That's 30factsaboutislam.com forward slash sign.